If you have not used Excel in the past much and you are a bit apprehensive, well, this lesson is for you. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you the basic concepts of Excel and how to use it, and you'll be able to create your first spreadsheet with a little bit of data and create your own report. So let's start. We go to start and then we click on Excel. I am using Excel with Office 365, but the same concept will apply for older versions of Excel. So I click on Excel, I have Excel opening, and here I can select either something that I used before or a blank workbook, which is what people usually select, or I can choose from one of those templates. Now here you have more templates, so you can check them out, or if you don't like them, you can go online and type anything. For example, budget, we click here, and we get more budget templates. Let's assume that you like this template. You click on it, you can see it, you can click here, create it, and then you can modify it. So then you don't start from scratch. But usually people like to start from scratch, so they will click on blank workbook, so double click on it, and you get your Excel sheet. Before I start typing numbers, I need to show you a few concepts in Excel. The first thing is the tabs. So here you can see there are several tabs or menus and each of those menus will have different options. So if you see, I have different ones. And then if I go back here, under this, what is called ribbon, you have groups. So this is one group, this is another group and so on. And obviously Excel cannot fit all the information or all the options under those menus. So to see the full options, you can just go into one of those groups and you can see that here you have an arrow. Once you click on the arrow, you can get more options and select from it from the menus. The other thing that you can see is if I hover on one of the items, it will explain to me what it is. And if it has, for example, a shortcut like this one, it will show me what is the shortcut that I can use. The next thing you need to know is that this menu option it's open but if you don't want it to be open you can right click here anywhere here at the right and you say collapse ribbon in the older versions of excel you had pin and unpin so if i click on collapse ribbon you can see that it has disappeared but if i click on any of the tabs or ribbon i can check what's available in the menu if i want to pin it back i can just click here and say always show ribbon Excel is made of rows, as you can see here, and I'm selecting a few rows, and it's made of columns. If you see here, I'm selecting a few columns. It has a lot of columns and rows. It has more than 1 million rows and more than 16,000 columns, I believe. So if you want to go to the end right, what you do is you can use a shortcut, which is Control and then arrow on the right. So you can see this is your last column. If you want to go back, you can do control and arrow to the left. The same thing you can use for rows. So if I want to see my bottom row, I do control and arrow down, and then I can do control arrow up. And if I'm down, I can also do control and then home, and then I'll go up there. If I want to add columns, or rows, it is also very simple. So let's just color here. For example, we'll color this and this. And let's assume we want to add some columns in between. So I can select those columns, right click, I have options. You see, I can delete, insert, and so on. So if I do insert, you can see that I inserted two more columns. If I want to delete them, I right click and I do delete. A shortcut that you can use for this is if I want to add a column or a row the same, you can do Ctrl and plus, you can see, or Ctrl minus to delete. Same thing for rows. So Ctrl plus and Ctrl minus. The intersection of a column and a row is called a cell. So for example, this is one cell. In order to move from one cell to the other, you can use the mouse and click or you can use the arrows on the keyboard and then you can move in the Excel sheet. 
Now the most important concept which is the most powerful in Excel is that every cell has a reference or an address. So for example, the cell that I selected is D5. So D and 5. And if you see, if I select it again, you can see that this is there. If you want to go to any cell in the Excel sheet, you can go here and type, for example, A300. You press enter and you go to A300. To go back, I'm going to do control and home. The other concept that you have is if you select multiple cells. So for example, if I select this, this is called a range. This is multiple cells. How do you write a range in Excel? You start with the cell that is at the top left, which is in this case C4, to the cell that is at the bottom right, which is D7. So the way you would write this is basically C4, then you do column, and then D7. This is how you write a range. And this is a very powerful concept that you're going to use with formulas. What we have seen here is called an Excel sheet. And you can see at the bottom it has a name. If you want to change the name, you just double click on it and you write another name, for example, test, and then you press enter. You could also add multiple sheets by pressing here on the plus button. So here I have another sheet, another sheet. If you want to delete a sheet, you just select it, right click, and press on delete, and then your sheet is gone. So if I go back to my test sheet, I can show you a few more options. One thing that I love doing is getting rid of those grid lines. This is very important when you make a dashboard. To do this, you go to view, and then you click on grid lines. Now let's start typing some text. So assume that here I type some text you can see that the text is overflowing. So it seems that the text is going to this cell, to cell B2 and C2, but in fact, it's not. How do you know this? If you click on cell A2, you have something here called formula bar. This formula bar shows you what you have in your cell. So here you have the text. If I move with the arrow to B2, you can see that I have nothing, and C2, I have nothing. Now, if you come to B2 and type something, for example, like, you can see that this text has disappeared, but in fact, it did not disappear. Excel has stored the text. You can see when I click on A2, you can see that the text is here and you can resize. So to resize, you can either select your cell or your row or your column, anything. So here I'm going to select my column. You can either just click, keep your mouse pressed and then move. So you can do this, you can see I'm adjusting it, or you can double click and then you'll see that this will adjust. Now, if you have multiple columns, you can select the multiple columns. For example, here I have A and B, and then you can go anywhere. So either between A and B or here, and then you double click and you can see that it will resize accordingly. And you can see that column B, for example, has shrunk. Another useful thing you could do is select both columns, or if you have three of them, for example, and then you can manually adjust. You can see that all of them will take the same size. So in this way, you can adjust all of them. Same thing for rows. If I select multiple rows, I can adjust it this way. If you want to undo something in Excel, you can use the shortcut Control and then Z. So now I did this, you can see that I go back to my previous steps and you can use it as much as you want it will go back step by step backwards and undo the actions that you have previously done to be honest with you the thing that was the most annoying in excel when i started was to modify the content of a cell so if i want to modify the content in this cell if i start typing you can see that whatever was there before is gone so how can I modify the content of a cell? Basically, there are several methodologies. The first one, you double click in the cell and then with the arrow keys, you can go and you can change anything you want. If you want to keep what you change like now, I can press enter. If I don't want to, I can press escape. In this case, I'm going to press escape. So I go back to what I had. The other way to do this is to go to the formula bar. So I click in the formula bar and then I can again type whatever I want. If I want to keep it, I press enter. 
Last one is a shortcut. So if you do F2 on your keyboard after selecting the cell, you can see that there is a cursor here now in the cell and then you can do whatever change you like. Here we have put some data, right? But you can also use a formula. So for example, here I can say equal and then with my arrow, I can go to this cell, the cell A2, I press enter and now you can see that I have the same text, but if you go to the formula bar, it's actually a formula. If you click here, you can see that I have selected cell A2 and then you can just move it. You can just click on it and then move it so it will change the cell you are referring to. Now, if you want to copy paste some data, you can use the shortcut Ctrl C. So here I have selected this and then I can come wherever I want and I'll do Ctrl V. Again, if you want to drag a formula, so you can come here. If you see, when I put my mouse here, my cursor here, you can see that this cross become a smaller cross, right? So if you just click on it and then you drag, you will see that my text has been dragged to the bottom. If you do this with a formula, you will see that the range of the formula adjusts automatically. So here I had B2, then if I go down, I have B3 and then B4 and so on. If you want to, again, move the content of a cell to another place, you can just move your cursor. If you can see again, this icon has changed. You just press, keep it pressed, and then you move to another cell and then you release the mouse and you have moved the text from one place to the other. Another useful option in Excel is the wrap text. So for example, let's assume that this is like this and I want to fix the problem I have with my text overflowing. So I can click on my text and then I can go to home. I have this ABC, which is wrap text. I click on it. You can see that it has wrapped my text to this, right? Now, if my text has more stuff, you can see that it automatically adjusted. If it doesn't, you can still play with your row height and you can double click and then everything will fit in your cell. Now you have worked on your Excel sheet and you want to save the content. So you can go to file and then you can do either save or save as. So save as will ask you for location and name. Save will do the same unless you already have saved it before. And then in this case, it will just override what you have saved. A shortcut for this is Ctrl and then S, and then you can do the same thing. Another useful feature in Excel is autofill. So for example, let's assume I wrote here Jan, which is January, and I click on it. I can go here and I can drag it. If I drag it, you can see here that Excel automatically recognizes the other months. So automatically it did Jan, Feb, March, etc. I didn't have to type them. And this is a cool feature. You can also like drag other things. So for example, if I have 20, I can just drag this number like this. Now, if you want to enter some numbers, if you enter something and you press enter, it goes down. If you want to go to the right, what you do is you press tab. So as you can see, I go to the right and I can start entering data. Now, if you want to enter data in a range like this, for example, you just select the range, then you enter something, you press tab, you enter something, tab, etc. When I press tab, now next time, it goes back to the line because I selected a range. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to create a small report. So we go to a new sheet, we go to view, remove grid lines, and then we're going to say sales report for the year. Here, what I'm going to do is put, for example, the salespeople's name. So, for example, I have John, Anna, Bob, Patrick. Here, I'm going to have the months. So, I'm going to say Jan, Feb, etc. I can use the technique that I showed you previously. So, for example, you have till December. And here, I'm going to input some numbers. So, again, I'm going to use my other technique. And I'm going to say 20, tab, 30, tab, etc. So let me just fill this with numbers. Here you go. Now I have some numbers. Now, another thing that we could do 
is let's assume that Bob is here, but I want it before. If I select the whole row and then I just drag it up, you will see that it wants to replace the data. So if I press OK, the problem is that Anna is gone. So I do Control Z. What you could do is Shift. So press Shift, keep it pressed, and then move it. You can see that if I do this, I release the mouse. Here I don't have this problem. Other than that, this is not looking nice, right? So what I could do is select all those cells. I can go to Home, and then here I have Merge and Center. If I click on it, you can see that this is Merge in the middle. The other thing you have here is that it is too spacious. So if I want to reduce the spaces, I just select my columns, I double click here, and you can see that this is now much better. I can add grid lines. So we go here under home, we do all borders, we have grid lines, I can start coloring this, I select it, I go here, I can select this, now for font, same thing, and now my report is starting to take shape. I can select the whole thing. I do thick borders. And then if I want to color this in blue and this in white, I can do it. And this is a report. Now, if you want to copy a format from one cell to the other, let's assume that I bolded this. So I click on it, I do bold, and then let's color it in another color like red. Let's assume I want the same format here. Instead of just doing the same thing, you can just click on this cell, click on the Format Painter, and click on your other cell, and you have taken everything that got formatted here to this cell. If you want to apply it to multiple cells, you could select this, double-click on the Format Painter, and then you just click on the cells that you want. You can also click on multiple cells at the same time. And then if you want to get rid of this format painter, because obviously every time you click, it's going to take the format, you just press escape. So that's it for a beginner overview of Excel. If you really liked it, please subscribe to the channel and like this video. And also I'm going to put a link to a couple of playlists that you can look at, which is basic formatting and formulas. And this will help you increase your knowledge in Excel.